Welcome to Hagley, where the DuPont story begins. The museum features the original DuPont mills, gardens, and the first DuPont family home built in America. All of this is set on 235 acres along the Brandywine River in Wilmington, Delaware. The museum is one of the treasures in the Brandywine Valley, also home to the internationally known Longwood Gardens and Winotaur Museum. Hagley is an important historic site, where E.I. DuPont built his black powder mills beginning in 1802, harnessing the power of the Brandywine. As the river surges through Delaware's granite hills, it gains momentum, dropping 124 feet in the last five miles. This power of falling water drove the early Industrial Revolution, providing the power to do work, to produce goods, and to make technological advance possible. Visitors to Hagley experience what life was like in the 19th century, both at work in the powder yards and at home. They take a scenic ride along the river to tour DuPont's estate and garden, seeing the Georgian-style mansion and the first office of the DuPont Company. They can visit a barn filled with antique vehicles, including a Conestoga wagon and carriages. Next to the barn is a restored French garden that is lovely in every season. It features espalier dwarf fruit trees, flowers, and vegetables. Today, visitors can learn about making gunpowder by following a powderman as he makes the rounds of the yard. To give a sense of the men, women, and children who lived along the Brandywine, Blacksmith Hill offers visitors a chance to experience their home and school life, to write with a quill pen, or sip tea in a worker's home. The powder yard was surrounded by several worker communities. The largest, known as Henry Clay Village, was a bustling place in the 19th century, as many of the workers settled along the banks of the river to raise their families. Though the area has changed greatly since its heyday, an operating HO scale model railroad display at Hagley gives visitors a true sense of its history. This railroad, spanning 50 feet, incorporates almost 300 feet of track and provides an overview of the mills and workers' communities dating back to 1900. It's a fascinating look at how different types of energy powered the mills, how various types of rail moved workers from place to place, brought in supplies, moved the gunpowder throughout the powder yard, and carried the finished product to market. The model railroad was constructed and is operated and maintained by a corps of nearly four dozen volunteers. This dedicated group has spent more than 13,000 hours working on the railroad. They come from a variety of professional backgrounds, including engineering, chemistry, machining, sales, education, and more. Many maintain intricate model railroads of their own and are involved in other railroad and volunteer activities. Several have been involved in the hobby for 50 years or more. Through their devoted work, the project has grown throughout the years and now depicts the powder yard community between 1895 and 1915, incorporating a spur of the Wilmington and Northern Railroad, a narrow gauge railroad inside the powder yard, and the People's Railway trolley line which began to run along Main Street in Henry Clay Village in June of 1906. The attention to detail and historical accuracy in the model railroad layout is remarkable. Using photographs and maps dating back to the late 19th century, Hagley volunteers recreated a piece of history. Breck's Mill, a former textile factory, was the community center, housing art classes, a basketball team, and a band made up of powder mill workers and owners. 
village stores included Sam Frizzles. The trolley passed by the shop, making it very convenient. Paul Bogans was another place to buy household necessities, and if you were good, get a piece of candy. Both stores also housed the Henry Clay Post Office at one time. Toys Tavern and Hotel provided a gathering place for area residents and accommodations for visitors. A blacksmith shop met needs of man and beast. Fire was a constant threat. When an early research lab burned in Henry Clay Village, nearby residents evacuated their homes and watered down roofs. New Bridge, the covered bridge at the foot of Rising Sun Lane, had a speed limit. Cows like to sleep inside it on summer nights, presenting a challenge to travelers. Solar energy dried the laundry, and chopping wood was a necessary form of exercise. Rowboats came in handy to get across the river. Every detail was recreated to scale. Since no pre-made models depicting the powder yards were available to the volunteers, each building, home, and rail line was carefully measured and built. The railroad began in 1866, when the Wilmington and Reading Railroad Company was formed, with service to Wilmington beginning in 1869. The residents of Henry Clay Village could ride the train to Wilmington for 12 cents in 1888, about $3 in 1997 dollars. By 1900, the line was leased to the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad for 999 years. Although the DuPont Company's mills on the Brandywine closed in 1921, the tracks of the Hagley branch near the trestle were not removed until 1928. Stand in front of the railroad, and you can see the expanse of the Brandywine Valley that runs from Rockford Tower up to the middle of the Hagley Powder Yard. There are many lessons to be learned from this diorama railroad. Most importantly, how the river was harnessed for energy and how the people and the product they made moved from place to place. Black powder, most commonly called gunpowder, was made from saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal. Much of the manufacturing process was done by machine, machines that were powered by water. The brandy wine was important to industrial development because it was a source of this needed water power. Mill owners constructed dams to provide a steady fall of water. The water flowed to water wheels or water turbines from mill races. Systems of gears then transferred the power from its source into the various types of motion necessary to run machinery. Four principal sources of power were used by the mills along the Brandywine in the 19th century. Water wheel, water turbine, steam, and hydroelectric. Water wheels were the first type of water power used by DuPont when he began building his mills in 1802. Of the three types of water wheels, breast, overshot, and undershot, the breast wheel was the best suited for this location. At the Birkenhead Mills, a 16-foot wooden breast wheel is still in operation. Beginning in the 1840s, these water wheels were gradually replaced with more efficient, durable water turbines. These turbines could operate efficiently even in high backwater when the water wheels would be nearly stalled. By the 1880s, turbines of various types had replaced all of the water wheels in the company's Brandywine Mills. At the Eagle Roll Mills, a water turbine can be seen turning the eight-ton roll wheels in the process to incorporate or mix the black powder. Water enters the turbine through an original cast iron flume pipe into a wooden tub casing. Although turbines improved upon water wheels, they still depended upon a regular supply of water. As the number of mills increased and the available water became insufficient to meet the company's power needs, steam engines were introduced in the powder mills in 1855. By 1874, there were seven steam engines in the mills, among them a small box bed engine, which supplied power to the pack house. A central steam plant was constructed in the 1880s to provide heat and power for a number of powder mill operations. It was located on the hillside above the river. This structure housed a large cordless steam engine and three coal-fired boilers. 
Power was conveyed to other locations in the powder yard by means of shafting and steam pipes. It was also the site of the first electrical generators at Hagley, when electricity was introduced for lighting. In 1898, a hydroelectric plant was constructed, where turbine-driven generators transformed water power directly to electricity. The electricity lit buildings and nearby homes, as well as driving some motors. Several methods were used to deliver power generated by falling water or steam to where it was needed. Often, mills were constructed in pairs, with a turbine located between them. Iron shafts carried the power directly to the rolling wheel, which crushed and combined ingredients of black powder to create a uniform mixture. Gears were used to change direction and speed. On occasion, the mill was located a considerable distance from the turbine, and extensive shafting was needed to transfer the power. Once steam power was introduced, many mills were set up so that they could be run by either water or steam, depending on the flow of the brandywine. The central steam plant contained both boilers and engines. Steam was also delivered from there to remote engines closer to the mill. They, in turn, powered shafting. Wire rope was also used to transfer power from one location to another, such as the machine shop and the keg mill. Equally as important to the powder making operation as water power was how the people and the product were moved from place to place. As the powder mill grew and transportation technology advanced, various forms of railroad became increasingly important. The Wilmington and Northern Railroad brought supplies to the Brandywine Mills. The same spur of the main line served a major textile mill just downstream. Materials were unloaded at the supply depot, which is now the Hagley Museum entrance area. From here, they were transferred to the narrow gauge railway system, which ran through the mill property. Steam locomotives were not permitted in the powder yards for a spark from the smokestack could have caused an explosion. Smokestacks at the steam boiler sites in the mills were unusually high to prevent live sparks from falling onto gunpowder. Cars on the narrow gauge line were either pushed by manpower or pulled by animal power, depending on the size. With the mills built on a steep hillside, mechanical power was often used to move rail cars from one level to another. Hydraulic elevators operated by turbine-driven pumps move cars up and down. Turning a hillside into an inclined plane some cars were pulled uphill by wire rope. Finished gunpowder was taken from pack houses to magazines in horse-drawn boxcars. The magazines were located near the Wilmington and Northern Line at the upstream end of the mills. Before a train could approach the magazines to pick up the powder, a spark arrester was lowered over the locomotive's smokestack. In 1906, the People's Railway Electric Trolley Line connected the Hagley Powder Yards and Henry Clay Village with Wilmington, Delaware. With this new transportation, workers no longer had to live within walking distance of the mills. It also made Wilmington, with its greater selection of stores and entertainments, more readily available to those living in the mill communities. In this brief overview of the model railroad at Hagley, we've seen the intricate work done by many skilled hands. Hours of attention to detail have created an exhibit that is an important addition to the visitor's experience. We're pleased that you were able to take a journey with us on the railroad. Come back for a visit. Hagley Museum is open daily 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. from March 15th through December 30th. During the winter, the museum is open on weekends, 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and has one tour winter weekdays at 1.30 p.m. Please call us for admission fees and a listing of special events. Our phone number is area code 302-658-2400, or visit our website for more information.